I've got a piece of silver birch here in the lathe and so it was originally like that as you can see got this crack through it and there's a little bit still on that crack on the top here now I've just used this piece of wood to give a demonstration for the Sealy airbrush that I bought just to give a review on that and I thought well why not do a video of the actual airbrush being used on a project so I'm going to just turn this down I'm going to put a tenon on the bottom here so I can then get it mounted around in the chuck and then I'll just turn some form of a very very basic sort of like pot bowl uh, something like that sand it all up and then use the airbrush on it with my walnut colouring crystals in there. I've now sanded this to 600 inside and out. I've managed to keep a small trace of the bark there, just to give us some contrast here. I do have a split, a little crack on the edge there. Uh, now, because I'm effectively dyeing the wood, uh, I can't really CA that or anything yet. Because if I CA that now, then it will just leave a, a really light patch when I put the dye on. And I do have a little bit of tear out on the outside here as well. But I didn't want to sand it too much because I was trying to keep some of these traces of bark, which is really soft, so it does sand away very easily. Now, in the airbrush, I've just got my walnut crystal mix. Uh, you can buy these there. I forget what the price is. They're fairly cheap. They're called walnut crystals from a company called Bulgers. I will try and put a link below. 
and all I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to spray the inside and just see what that comes like. I've also changed my lathe over to the slowest um, speed on the belt so we're about 80 rpm there and it's just so that I can get hopefully get an even coat on here so I'm just going to give this a spray check we've got spray coming out there and I'm going to start from the outside I shall start spraying as I'm pointing out from the edge and then carry on all the way in which hopefully it should give it a fairly even spray so spray on out again so I've still got It looks uneven because of the you've got a shadow appearing from one of the lights on the top there and because of the different changes in the wood so air on spray on so the lathe is actually probably turning too slow for what I'm doing here Some more on the bottom here. Just going to turn the lathe speed up a bit. So about 130 there. That's a better coverage. It doesn't look so well covered just because it's drying so quick. So I'm going to let that dry off. And then I'll come back because the grain will have raised and it will need sanding back. And I've left this to dry for a few minutes. And so hopefully you can see it's just got a fairly un uniform sort of dull brown colour to it. I've got the highlight patches for where the bark is. This dark patch here, I don't know how well it shows on the camera, that's sort of where the grain has lifted. Uh, so that's a bit of a, a rough bit there. And the inside it sort of looks dark in patches but if you stick a torch on there it's actually dry so i'm just going to just knock this back again with 600 grit paper so shouldn't 600 should be plenty enough so you can see how it brings the brown off there on the paper i mean that is super smooth so that's now knocked all the grain back and it's not really just took much out of the colour it's just made it a little bit paler and I will respray that again now and let that dry probably sand it back and probably then do it give it a third coat this has only actually only had two coats uh, the second coat went on reasonably thick it's, hopefully you can see there it's still a, a dull brown uh, which it will stay like that until we get some form of um, a finish on here and it's, in actual fact, it's still really, really smooth. There are odd little patches where you can just about feel it coming through. And all as I do with this now is just use the gold Nyweb to knock it back with. Uh, this one's supposed to be the equivalent of about a thousand grit. So just to go over it. So it's sort of like just denibbing it really. The odd bits of grain that have lifted I mean this is really really good stuff it's cheap uh, this one's particularly from uh, this one I've actually got from chestnut products I did get the whole set of four that they do uh, and I've really only ever used the gold and the white and the white is not really supposed to have a grit so it's more of a, like a, a, a polishing uh, effect so I just tend to go over the pieces with it. That sort of just seems to buff it up a bit. So that is now really smooth. What you'll find is the moment we get some sanding sealer on, as then where it sort of like comes to life. So 
hopefully you can see there now it's really sort of brightened up and even though this is water based I mean there's there's a little bit of brown come out of here but that might well be just because of the dust from where I've just knocked it back with an eye web I'll just get some of that inside as well and I'll leave that now a couple of minutes to, to dry off properly so just let that dry off I'm not too bothered about this crack now it's not really visible from the outside you can just about see it on the inside there uh, I mean I could drop a bit of CA in there that's just really a demo piece that's going to probably sit in the shed here so I'll just knock that back again with the NIWEB <clears throat> There are bits of dust come off there. <clears throat> so that's really smooth again. And for finish wise, I'm going to use microcrystalline wax to blow out any dust that might be on there. I use the chestnut product one. Uh, this one, you really don't need to put much on at all uh, all you want to do is get a smear on the piece um, and then you leave it for up to about 20 minutes uh, so I just got to make sure I get into everywhere so you just don't want too much of this on there uh, this has been about 15 20 minutes since i last put this on and i'm just going to buff it off now so i just get that parted off Now, that's the finished piece it's not very big uh, but hopefully it just gives an example of using the airbrush in a project so there's no real sort of drastic coloring of the reds yellows and oranges it's just really a wood dye it's certainly just really just darkened up what the original wood was like uh, and produced that and I've just sanded the bottom off but I've left the bottom plain uh, so it just acts as sort of like a reminder as to what the actual wood is uh, this is the one that I actually did the very first time with the airbrush and it's a piece of walnut uh, it's really really punky inside so it's it's quite rough but the outside I've got a really really good finish on and this is where I've actually likened the airbrush on these is because you can get more of an even coating when you put it on yes you can soon get a build up but when you do it by brush you put big lumps of moisture on the brush in one go so it's hitting the work in one place with a whole puddle of, of moisture which you quickly try and brush around but you are by doing it that way with by brush you are getting certain areas that build up bigger pieces of moisture than others so using the airbrush it's i mean these two i'm really really pleased with the way they've come out it's just the airbrush gives you that better control over where you're actually putting all the all the liquid on Certainly if you want some real good examples of some highly sort of detailed colouring using airbrushes and all sorts of other methods, uh, do go and check out Stuart Farini. I'll put a link below in the description. Uh, he absolutely loves his colour and his texture on his work and he's, he's a real joy to watch. Thanks a lot for watching.